Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey, Facebook family, welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose with me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guide and servant on the healing journey. What's my name? Big Papa Brian Post. So happy Friday, everyone. April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. Child Abuse Prevention Month. Isn't that an interesting selected month? Like what, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean during the month of April, we're going to not abuse children I don't I don't know so I'm having a hard time kind of getting behind that because I believe like every day and like every minute every hour should be child abuse prevention month but why do why do we abuse children can anyone tell me why we abuse children it's very simple it's from stress adults who abuse children are stressed out adults and stressed out adults are regressed adults so they become children and they are trying to raise other children hey philip how you doing and tina philip and tina so stressed out adults become children who are raising children and then their brain stem gets activated and whatever they've experienced before is what gets stirred up and that's how child abuse happens. And that's just a... The thought of child abuse is a really sad thing. And I mentioned to you guys the other day that my my partner, David DeRove, my former partner, used to be uh, CEO of Post Institute, had sent me a link about a, a an adult man punching a one-month-old. And not too long ago, I, I uh, commented on a video about a um, child care worker slinging a little girl and the little girl hit a cabinet and split her head open. Those are just signs of stressed out adults. And that's just what we don't see. We don't pay enough, we don't pay enough attention to that. We don't talk about that enough. We don't talk about how stressful it is to be an adult. See, we think that you know, it's just, a, it's just a matter of parenting. It's not just about parenting. It's, it's really about working through your own stuff. And I talked about this a little bit last night. We're always through, in the process of working through our own stuff. And the people who end up abusing children, ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, it's the same thing. I talked about R. Kelly. I mentioned Michael Jackson. You know, even Elvis Presley, they talk about Elvis Presley married a 14-year-old. A grown man married a 14-year-old child. There's a reason for that. It's, it's us as adults are still trying to work through our stuff. And what's interesting is that that ties in for me, it ties in back to that. So I saw two things recently. One, I mentioned to you guys about the 60-minute um, the episode, which I'm going to at some point post that comment on it about the prison that's working towards relationship. Hey, Heidi, happy Saturday to you in New Zealand. And then just yesterday, I was looking at USA Today. I always say that USA Today is the inquirer for business travelers. The only, the only time I ever look at a USA Today is when I'm on the road somewhere and I can snag one from a hotel. So they were talking about how horrible the conditions are at these prisons in Alabama. How the, secu the, the, the guards are completely overwhelmed and they just look the other way. They, like, they, can't, they can't control anything. They look the other way and, and inmates are getting raped and they're getting murdered. They, like, these people have been murdered in prison and they've just... You know, they've said it's natural causes, but it wasn't natural causes, it was murder. And you contrast that to this prison facility in California. I think it's California. Surprisingly, it's California. 
that is creating this love-based relationship model in prison and they've got no incidents of violence. The whole goal of a prison is to reform the, the inmate. Who's being more reformed? Where's more reform happening? Is it happening in the prison in Alabama where they're, where they're letting one another just basically be animals? And rape and murder and pillage and bring in drugs and just completely lower limbic brain, completely amygdala driven? Or is more reform occurring in the prison in, I think it's California, where they're actually building a love-based relationship model and there's been no violence? Only stress, only stress allows us to not see the truth in that, that difference in that contrast, right? It's only stress that allows us to think that there's something still okay about that prison in Alabama and there's something not okay about that prison in California. And the reality is every one of those inmates was an abused child. Every one of those inmates, it's just like when I talked about R. Kelly and I talked about Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley, every one of those individuals were abused children. So it may not be that they don't deserve to be in prison, just like the guy who, who recently murdered the rapper Nipsey Hussle. And I never even listened to Nipsey Hussle's music. I don't know anything about him until you know it made national attention. And so I looked at some of his stuff. I, I actually had watched a, I follow Gary V big fan of Gary V but I was watching an episode of Gary V once once um, a couple months ago and he was in studio with Nipsey Hussle and hanging out and the brother was real cool and was, was spitting some real philosophy but he and he was recently murdered so it was just recently that the guy who murdered him you know who's now in solitary confinement what was his history at the end of the day, we're talking about Child Abuse Prevention Month. That's some bullshit. I'm just going to, just let me, just let Big Papa say, Child Abuse Prevention Month is, Child Abuse Prevention Month is some bullshit. We should be focused on child ab abuse prevention every single moment that we are raising children and participating in the care and nurturing of children. But we can't do that because we do things like create Child Abuse Prevention Month. When we, when we create a month, when we title a month around an experience that we should always, that we should all be committed towards eliminating, I feel like it creates a problem. I feel like it creates the problem. It's a part of the problem. I feel like the very nature of Child Abuse Prevention Month is an inside the parenting matrix phenomenon. We recognize a month in the year when, when child abuse prevention is the, is the, child abuse prevention should start at infancy. All of the policies and all the money that's spent on imprison, imprisoning people um, putting, putting juveniles in prison, all the money that's spent in so, so many levels of child welfare, that should be really redirected to early child care and early parenting training and intervention. If we took a fraction of the money that we spend in juvenile detention, a fraction of the money that we spend on juvenile probation, a fraction of the money that we spend in child welfare investigations, and we directed that towards helping new parents learn how to work through their trauma, love themselves when they've never felt love before, and hence love their children, I believe we wouldn't have things like Child Abuse Prevention Month because we could start to eliminate child abuse. So the first steps towards eliminating child abuse are the steps towards awareness and mindfulness and understanding and realizing that when you get stressed out, 
when you get stressed out and overwhelmed, you get stirred up to a part of your brain that brings up all your old memories. I said this last night, deal with your own shit. Deal with your own shit and don't put it on your kids. And when we start dealing with our own stuff and we start really being vocal about supporting one another in dealing with our stuff, then we'll stop perpetuating the cycles, the cycles of trauma. We'll stop perpetuating the cycles. Hey, good evening, Kirsten. Hey, Ashley. We'll stop perpetuating the cycles of fear and stress and reactivity. So that's it. Big Papa loves you. God bless each and every one of you. Say a prayer for all the children who've been abused. Say a prayer for all the adults who've been abused. And let's just pray that we can we can continually work to bring more love where there's been fear. It's Friday night. I'm probably not going to see you guys Saturday and Sunday. So I'm going to take a break Saturday and Sunday. I'll be back post daily dose Monday evening, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we'll pick up from there. Have a fantastic weekend.